because I knew they'd be, you know, put out on, on the whole thing. With right. The, the traveling. So. You're at a point where you have to fly people into the wedding. That's <laughs> if I got married to it, I'd have to pad Literally. and fly people in. Literally. I have to fly my family in. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd have to fly them into the wedding. I'll fly them into a, to a fucking, it won't be a wedding. I just want to get married so I could make a mess of it. Like, I would love to have a wedding just so I could relapse on. Don't, if you're an adult for three hours. <laughs> Young, impressionable uh, teenagers, they want to listen to Robert Malone on Joe Rogan. So it's a real danger. Now, adults who are no lo- are not responsible for their behavior anymore, they don't. If you're an adult now, whatever you do or don't do, vaxxed or unvaxxed, dead or alive, fat or thin, on fentanyl or not, whatever you're doing at any given moment of the day is no longer your responsibility it's because some podcaster fucked you over. Some podcaster said something and you took it to heart and now you made a choice that got you killed because you listen to a podcaster because that's where you get your information from. You're an adult in America. Right, right. And being a loser is fun. No one will, it means they, they're fun. Um, but at the end of that, I was like, okay, it's time to change because... Sometimes you just got to get something out of your system. You got to get being a loser out of your system. Right. And being a loser is fun. No one will admit like that being a loser has its benefits. Yeah. And 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 and, and actually starting to not be a loser is, is can suck. And then you have to worry about like, oh god, now I got to stay not a loser, right? Right. Obviously, you don't want to be a loser, but like, and then people people would look back and be like, oh, you were never a lose. I'm like, yeah, I was. I was an absolute lo- like every. I had lost everything and i was lo- like Literally. i was the definition of lose like right but sometimes you just got to get that shit out of your system before you can go and some unfortunately sometimes that kills you right. <laughs> right sometimes that kills you sometimes the things you have to do to get being a loser out of your system kill you so it's unfortunate and then sometimes you'll never get being a loser out of your system which is why you need to get killed in iran you need to get shot in iran Sometimes it will never work. It's you're never going to see the light. So you just need to go to Iran and get shot. And it's not. It says nothing negative about you. Mm-hmm. It's just an observation I have from thirty thousand feet looking at your life, and I'm going. You need to be a flag. This is the rule. Chocolate is for the the baskets. The desserts are pastry, creams, and fruit. Okay. That's what it's about. Light desserts. Appetizers are they're nothing. They're dips. All the other holidays, you can have some warm appetizers. Easter, it's inappropriate. You have salads, light dips, things like that. It's, it's a feast holiday. It's, it's about a roast. And the desserts shouldn't be heavy chocolate winter desserts. We're in spring now, Okay. You do, you know, like, a, you know, it's a great Easter dessert is that mill crepe cake, meal, mill, whatever, from New York City, where it's just layered with crepes and, and cream. Very, that's a perfect fucking dessert on Easter, you piece of shit. <laughs> all the podcasts, they all look at you like this. I like that. I don't, I don't want to look at you. The fuck over it. Tell me, I, oh, yeah, I want you to look at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have to look at you. You get what I'm saying, okay? Enough. Go watch something else. Why don't you look at the camera? Why doesn't your studio look like an adult treehouse? <laughs> Why not? Why don't you read listener mail? I don't, because I don't care what you say. Read listener mail? Why don't I listen to your show? You, listener mail? You fucking on crack? Can we send in questions? No. We do the live stream. You asked a question. That's sending in a question. Um, but that's what Easter's about. It's a good holiday <laughs> if you eat. And you you know, but you gotta you don't don't fuck around. You know, do the right thing there. You know? You're not gonna be able to have Easter now. You're gonna have what you and here's the other thing. Let me say another thing. About your quarantine content. Stop with the cute families doing like choreographed dances. There are people wearing garbage bags contracting this disease and dying. 
Stop with your choreographed family pajama dance, you psychopath. What in God's name is wrong with you? I'm glad it took a pandemic for you to be a parent. I'm glad. But keep it to yourself. There are people that are struggling. And shit. <laughs> all the podcasts, they all look at you like this. I like that I don't, I don't want to look at you. <laughs> the fuck over it. <laughs> Tell me. I, I want you to look at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have to look at you. You get what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. Enough. Go watch something else. Why don't you look at the camera? Why doesn't your studio look like an adult treehouse? <laughs> Why not? Why don't you read listener mail? I don't, because I don't care what you say. Read listener mail? Why don't I listen to your show? You, listener mail? <laughs> you fucking on crack? Can we send in questions? No. We do the live stream. You asked a question. That's sending in a question. Um, but that's what Easter's about. It's a good viable <laughs> way. That's very public. I'm able to go, hey, I want at the end of this, I want, I want to walk into Cedars and I want everyone to start clapping and crying. And I want them to go, you're the hero. And I go, no, no, you're the hero. And then they hand me like maybe a gold stethoscope or something. That's kind of nice, mm -hmm. you know? Like a plaque. Yeah. And they say, thank you. And the mayor of Los Angeles gives me a key to the city. You know? Yeah. You know? And then they look at me and they go, can we tell you something? Promise to keep a secret? And I go, yeah. And they go, the whole virus was fake. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you fucking guys! The wife is lovely. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. Wait, can I Mr. Get Pappas. A, can I get a pancakes while I'm here? Yeah, you can yeah. get anything. The bricks and sticks of your house yeah. appreciate. Uh -huh. The frame, the land, uh -huh. they appreciate in value. You know what your money does in your house for you, Mr. Pappas? It does absolutely nothing. Right. You know what the wealthiest people do with real estate, Mr. Pappas? Right. A lot of them finance it. Why? Because your mortgage is your only tax write-off. It is the only write-off. It is your only fucking weapon against the federal government. The larger the loan you take, the better it is for you financially. And you take that $80,000, and, and I'm not wrong, by the way, and you put, well, I'm a little, and you put it in tax-exempt securities like Roth IRAs. Mr. Pappas, you maximize the amount of, of tax-exempt retirement accounts that you put your money in with that $80,000 you make it work for you you do not sink it into a house yes or yes so the reality is this we're taking the biggest loan possible <laughs> that Mr. Pappas will set you free <laughs> now sign this piece of paper for Christ and at that point you and your wife are crying yeah yeah and then uh, we sign papers then you, you go die but how do you get the loan from the bank they're well, giving yeah, away back in the day. what are we doing we're talking about now we're back in the day no, back, back in the day, day. Yeah, back in the doing? day and go to the bank I said Kelly we got one <laughs> And Kelly, I said, Mr. Pappas and his wife, Brittany's from Long Island. They want to go buy a piece of marble hunk of shit. And Kelly has got coke running down her nose from last night. She's got a fucking double tall non-fat latte from Starbucks non-fat. She's not getting anyone. And she nails it down and she says, let me. She makes all the paperwork look like it should look. And then my little shitty bank, which was called Franklin First or New World Mortgage or the Mortgage Zone or the Funding Hut or whatever it is, <laughs> we send our paper to a fucking even bigger and as similarly shitty bank like a Long Beach Mortgage or a New Century Mortgage or an Argent. And those banks were doing backdoor deals with J.P. Morgan Citigroup. So those banks were underwriting the paper to the, the, to the middle grade banks that were lending money to the dirt bag brokerage operating out of a van places that I worked, okay? Right. So when this all, you ever play the game of hot potato? Yeah, it's an orgy, yeah. So when, so when everything goes wrong. You pass it around. Pass we're passing it around. Yeah. And then by the time you sign your mortgage, by the time you get your first bill, because the other benefit, Mr. Pop, is you don't pay for two months. Right. For two months, you don't pay. But That's are you sure I'm going to be able to afford this mortgage? My stand-up comedy career is up and down. Mr. Pappas, I have watched your stuff. I think you're a genius. Thank you. 
and I think you're an absolute genius, and I will tell you this right now. All you have to worry about right now is, 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 is what are you going to do with I'm those I'm just two? a little worried. I'm not passing the cellar. Am I going to have a future? What are, you're going to have a cellar in the home that we put you in. <laughs> All you have to worry about as a pop is what are you going to do with those two free months? Because we're rolling it into the mortgage. You've got 60 days. I would take a little vacation with this lovely lady. Are you serious? Two. Because I was concerned I even had enough for the mortgage before this. Two free months. What? Yeah, that's right. You're saying free. Am I going to have to pay at some point for this down the line? We're rolling it into the mortgage, which again, we talked about it just increases your tax deduction. If you could, Mr. Poppins, you'd take a loan every day. Honey, do you th- I mean, I every just, day you I'm, would take a loan because the federal government is coming to take your hard-earned money. Fredo for him. Um, you know, it is what it is. But again, you, you know, it, I'm not saying that everybody has to like nice things or nice restaurants or whatever, okay? When I went out to the steakhouse and the person was just continually referencing that they had never been to a place like this before and that they were so impressed and uh, that doesn't care about you. You should do something on your own. That's what I'm doing. I find it very fulfilling most times. And the great thing about Monday.com, okay, is it is easy to stay organized. If you're starting your own business, easy to find files. Looking through your emails to find stuff is a nightmare. I hate doing that. I have 2,000 emails right now that are unread. Monday.com will organize everything in one place. You aren't wasting your time searching for the things you need. It creates accountability. Okay? What's more annoying than asking someone to do something and never getting a response? Well, I guess if your kid had cancer and you didn't have money and... You couldn't get them the care that they wanted. That. But other than that, what would be more annoying than asking someone to do something and never getting a response? Here's something that might be annoying. If an, a guy that was running an international child trafficking ring was about to testify against prominent members of the government and uh, was found dead in his cell and no one seemed to care. But other than that, other than the kid with cancer and other than Jeffrey Epstein, what else would be annoying? Asking somebody if they did something and not getting a response. Are they working on it? Did they never get the email? Uh, did you never get the email, Donna? Are you going to say that? Are you going to literally look at me and say that you never got the email? You fat slob. Donna, are you going to look at me right now in my face, my bloated Irish face, and tell me that you didn't get this done? I told you to do it. God damn it, Donna. When I hired you, I knew that you'd be a problem. But your friends are my brother. He's a goddamn loser. And I knew when I brought you in, it would be more of the same. So to avoid this, you get Monday.com. This platform is suitable for any size team. From two freelancers working together, me and Ben, to thousands collaborating across the globe, Goldman Sachs or the Epstein Pedophile Network. <laughs> How gr- I bet Jeffrey Epstein would not have been caught if he used Monday.com. If Jeffrey Epstein used Monday.com, he would not be dead in his jail cell. He'd be on his island living life because he'd be easily able to track emails and de- demand accountability from his staff. Ghislaine wouldn't be eating in and out burger. She'd be responding to emails. Got to check out Monday.com. It is really good. Listen, it's we're starting to use it now. It's a workplace management tool. We are now coordinating all of our things, the podcast, the videos, my live dates, the website. We're revving up. We're ramping up. More people are liking what we're doing. We got to get ready for it. It's easy to joke around because that's what I do. It's my job. You see? So it's easy to joke around. But one thing is not funny. What's not funny is being a fucking failure. And many of you will be a failure if you don't figure out a way to organize your business. Okay, so instead of email spreadsheets, random files, whiteboards, to do lists, posted notes, Monday.com organizes and tracks everything. So what you would do essentially is you would dissolve the people in a pot. Mm -hmm. And then you would shoot. You would shoot their waste into space. Yeah, you could uh, I guess you could profit off of it, maybe like if you turn it into vitamins or pills, maybe of some kind. 
you wouldn't go in immediately. You'd get a few chances. But like on the third, ch- and then the cops would also have that over your head. They go, you go into the pot. If you, if third time, third time's a charm, third time's a pot. People in the street be like, yo, that motherfucker went to the pot. <laughs> and we would, we would use chemicals to dissolve people. And they would go away. It's a thought. It's a thought. Rick Caruso is like, she's like, remember when your mother, she goes, I'm Italian. Your mother would have a pot of sauce. But we got a pot of problems. But we're going to dissolve people, their skin and their bones and their <laughs> teeth, using a high, highly effective and environmentally safe chemical that allows people to be dissolved within a matter of minutes and eliminated from our society. Never to be seen or heard from it. And every person that gets dissolved, they like do a little nice thing, like they do like a nice, it's like there's a thing that happens. It's not like a total loss. Okay. There's like a rib, they put a ribbon around a fence or something. (laughs) And then we just have a very long fence. (laughs) And every time we dissolve a human being, we put a ribbon around the fence. Because it's not, it's not going to get better if we don't start thinking about how to dissolve people in a pot. People can get mad at this, and people can get offended at it. But what else are you going to do? What are you going to do? Give, give them all jobs at Geico? Put them in a pot. The judge looks at you right in the eye, you go to a court, and she goes, it's your third time here, and you know what that means. You're going to the pot. And the person goes, and then she just clicks the gavel, Mm -hmm. and there's no appeals. You don't even spend the night in jail. Mm -hmm. You're taken from the courthouse to the pot. Immediately. Before you know it, before you know what happens. They 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 hit you. While you're standing there in court, they hit you with a uh, a tranquilizer. Mm-hmm. And then you wake up for a minute. Right before, like it's a, it's a, maybe an hour trank. You wake up for a minute, you're in a little cell, and there's a door, and the cell gets really, really like hot. Like your feet, you, you gotta like, you gotta open the door. So you end up opening the door, and then you just, you, it's, it's kind of like, there's like a wall that pushes you out and you go right into the pot. Right into the pot. And you're dissolved immediately, instantaneously. <laughs> this is jobs. This is a great way to, to figure it out. And if a lot of people out there are interested in this and excited about this, write to Rick Caruso. Tweeted him. Go, <clears throat> I heard. I'm very excited about your 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 new program to dissolve the homeless people using chemicals. Can you go into this? Can you speak on this? Rick, I was at a party in Hancock Park, and one of my friends said he was going to be working for the company that provides you the chemicals in which you were going to dissolve the homeless people once they had had their last shot. They're going right to the pot. That could be his slogan. Mm -hmm. Caruso. What's his slogan now? Does he have one? He's going to have something, right? He doesn't really have one. Huh. For the love of L.A. I think that's it, yeah. You know what I think it should be? To the pot. Rick Caruso, you go to the pot. Go up for a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. That's sweet. It's everybody at the uh, Grove. It's everyone at the Grove. It's all the employees at the Grove. He said, you're all fired if you don't get out into the street with Dodgers jerseys, look as Hispanic as possible, and endorse me right now. 
that guy in the wheelchair, he looked at Rick, he goes, hey, Rick, I really enjoyed this photo shoot. Can I have the rest of the day off? Rick goes, get the, get the fuck back and work right now. I'll kill you. You want to go to the pot? <laughs> <laughs> and if the pot works in L.A., it's pots for everyone. Mm. Pots for San Francisco. Mm. Dallas will have a pot. They'll already put in a pot. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll put, in a, they'll put in a frying pot. Dallas goes, we fry people here in oil. This is a good story. Rick's grandparents came to America from Italy through Ellis Island. They were very big supporters of Mussolini. It's weird that they would put it in the bio, but it's funny. His father served in World War II, even though he disagreed with America's stance. It's odd. This is in a bio. <laughs> it's very funny. This is in a bio. In 1987, Rick founded Caruso, creating tens of thousands of jobs and building some of Southern California's most beloved community centers. Those two images is me after a gig at the Stardome asking why, if it's called room service, do I have to go to the lobby and get it? That's the saddest image of them all. Me going, let me ask you a question. She goes, well, we don't have anyone to run it up. I go, well, you have you. Don't you have you? I got to be here for people to check in. Honey, honey, honey. No one's checking in. Let's lock the doors and let's call it a night. Everybody that's here, everyone that needs to be here is here now. Um. That's the road, man, and and it's it's it's. I I I thank everybody who came out in Huntsville, Alabama. I don't think I think four people came out in Hoover, Alabama. Four four to seven fans. My level of talent does not correspond at all to my level of money. I should have a lot of fucking money, and I don't. I have enough. Don't worry, I have enough. We're doing fine. We're getting by the Patreon, but like, look look at the. I I will. I could introduce you to millionaires who I mean these people. I mean they can't spell their name. I mean, truly. 80,000 cases in the U.S., 85,000 cases. Yeah. What does New York have right now? New York leading the pack, NYC. 37,000 cases, 387 deaths in the state of New York. Ah. You know what's interesting, man? It's a real reset for anybody who's young. If you're under 25, it's time to move back home if you can. Move back home. Listen, don't. Don't be upset. Don't think it's a failure. But if you if it's at all possible for you to go back home for 12 to 24 months and save fucking money, there's no shame in it. This is a reset. I can't go home. My mother's in a mental institution and my father and his wife live together. I can't. There is no home for me to go. I, and I'm 35. That's also you can't go home when you're 35. That's it. You're in your mid 30s. You, the home you go when you're 35 is your death eventually. <laughs> You're closer to that than the age when you can just walk, you know, go home. Which is why, in retrospect, what a great time 9-11 was. It was just such a fun fucking time. 9-11. Wow. Just growing up. Being young. You know? Is it going to be anthrax? Is it going to be smallpox? What's going to get us? Bioterror? Nothing happened. There were no additional attacks. You know? You know what's great about 9-11? Everything made you a hero. Going out and getting drunk made you a hero because if you didn't go out and get drunk, the terrorists won. Right. Oh, so good. If you didn't go out and get drunk and eat a sandwich at 2 a.m., the terrorists won. Do you want the terrorists to win? No. So you go live your life. Remember President Bush? He's like, what can Americans do? He said, go shopping. Go shopping because that's what we are. We got to lean in a little bit to that. We are demons from hell. That's really what we are. We're not a good country of good people. That idea has to be smashed. 
let's lean in. It's I get it. When Bush is like, go shopping, he's not wrong. He's like, what are you guys going to do anyway? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do grief counseling? Shut the fuck. What are you going to? What are you going to volunteer your time to, to talk to people? Do grief counseling? No. Go and buy a dress. Go get a car and drive it real fast. Fatty. Go get a panini press. Go get a waffle iron. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. We shop or the terrorists win. We get drunk or the terrorists win. Mm -hmm. That was a great thing about 9-11. You were, <laughs> it was your patriotic duty to consume. Mm -hmm. To consume, to go out and gorge yourself with food and wine and booze. Do shots with your friends and get fucked up on the weekends because this is America and that's how we roll. And Osama bin Laden will never take that away from us. He'll never take away our ability to go out to bars and get fucked up with money that we stole from our parents. One way or the other. Sometimes it was hard stealing. There's a little money on a mantle. It's mine. Sometimes you go right into the pocketbook, right into the purse. Take a little bit off the top. Go right in there and grab a couple of 20s, 50. Ooh, you got 100. Got to be a good night. Got to be a good night. Hope she doesn't notice. She's had a few. A lot of people in Long Island stole. Kleptomaniacs. They steal money. They love it. I would take money every now and then. I was a junk box, druggie. Some people did it sober. That's funny to me. Hilarious. I mean, I know people who are stone cold sober stealing from their families. Great. No excuse. Stealing, stealing clothes, you know? There's something very deeply wrong with the area that I come from. It's a sickness. It's worse than Corona. It's worse than COVID. It's a 100% rate of being a piece of shit. <laughs> That's the statistic. You grow up in Long Island, yeah. full of malls. Mm -hmm. You get a job because your mother's friend, Deb, knows someone at the rec center. And you just sit there in a chair and watch people almost drown in the pool. Life is a meaningless waste of time. Don't kid yourself. And don't kid yourself. I don't think much will change in this country after this pandemic. You know, I thought that it would. I'm like, people are going to start getting serious. They'll move out to the suburbs. They're going to want kids. They're going to want to, they're going to want, you know, they want real sh I don't know. I don't know. It would be great if that shit ends, if your fucking one man show is over. If you realize that you want to get, you know, something real in your life, it's tangible, property, family. You're not just going to waltz around being a dilettante, pretending to be an artist, wasting your own time and everybody else's, you know? New York could get dangerous again. The economy could get bad. Moving to a city like that could be a real risk. The fun might be over. You better really fucking want it. You better really want it. If you, get, if you could get a knife to your throat on the A train, you better really want to be fucking funny and interesting. You better really want, otherwise, the pull of the traditional life, the life that many of you should be living, the traditional life, that, it's going to be very strong. After this pandemic, my prediction could be wrong, is that the pull of that tradition is going to come back. Suburbs, back. I want space. I want property. I want a house. How many people are quarantining in a box right now going, no more? Yeah. I want out. I want, a, I want something real. I want to love someone. I want them to love me. I want real responsibilities. I don't want to host a fair weather friends and people trying to step on my neck to get ahead. I want to get the fuck out of these cities like New York and L.A. and go. People like me are going to stay, but we should stay because we're, we're good at what we do. You ain't, and you know who I'm talking to. If you're sitting out there and you're listening to this and you're like, hey, man, is he talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you even think like that, I'm talking to you. You should be sitting there going, fuck this fat fuck. I'd do it better than him. And then you got a shot. If you're sitting there going, fuck this guy. I could do that show better. He's what, his Netflix is whatever. Everybody sweats this guy, but fuck him. Who cares? I would do it better. Oh, I'm Megan McCann. Good. That, now I respect you, you little demon. 
<laughs> but you'll still fail because life's a bitch. So don't get too high on your high horse. Okay. I just spoke to Luis Gomez for an hour. This is what happens. <laughs> I forget how much I like Luis. You need people like Lewis right now. You're going to need people to figure out ways because there's going to be a lot of naysayers and doomsdayers. I'm one of them. I'm going to tell you to jump off a building. Lewis is going to give you a ladder and the ladder's going to break and you're still going to die, but it's going to feel nicer. See what I mean? Guys, you've watched your show. You know how bad my skin is. Since a little kid, I have Irish skin, you know, which, you know, Irish is great. If you're Irish, you can, you know. Uh, Horrible life. You're garbage. What is this? What is this? Where people have absolutely no sense of, you know, it's a restaurant where they serve steak. We get it. You've had a horrible life. I don't know what you want me to tell you. It's uncomfortable. It's not cute. You got to be really hot if you're selling that you're a, a, a trash bag. You got to be so fucking hot to sell that just simple like, I don't know about all these fancy places. I don't know about all these fancy restaurants. You got to be just fucked. Like when people look at you, they all want to fuck you if you sell that. Otherwise, act like you've been here before. Act like you've been to a steakhouse before. Okay? Enough. Nobody's, nobody, I don't know what mark of value you think you have because you, you've you done nothing and you've been around people that have never done anything. I, I've never been to a place like this. This is a place we go to. This is the nicest meal I'll have all year. Well, then kill yourself. <laughs> I, I don't, what is this addiction to your unfortunate circumstances? Are we supposed to applaud you? Then make different choices, dummy, or don't. Maybe you don't like going out to nice right? It's fine. You don't have to. But there's this pride now in having nothing. It's like this weird, perverse pride. Oh, yeah, they got a lot. I got nothing. Then get something or shut up. Uh, these people are not systemically underprivileged people. I'm not talking to people that have been fucked over. I'm not talking to Epstein victims here. I'm talking to fucking class people who've chosen to be comedians who think it's funny that they don't have a dollar. Fun videos just for Patreon. You're also going to get an email where you can correspond with the show. We will answer you. You can suggest topics. You can suggest interviews. You can suggest things. We will get back to you. We'll talk to you. Um, you know, you know, it'll be interactive. You know, we want you to kind of help steer the show to a reasonable extent. Okay. We know who some of you are going to want on. We know. I know already. I know what you want. I know what some of you are going to want. We know. So. I know it's some. Hey, if I pay twenty dollars, can David Duke come on? No, <laughs> no, David Duke cannot come on if you pay twenty dollars. That's not enough money. Now, I will say this: if there was a thousand dollar tier. If you give me a grand, will I interview David Duke? Probably. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna agree with him. I'll probably. I'll fire back at some of what he says. But for a G, if you want to Venmo me a grand. I'll probably interview David Duke and I'll send it to you. You know, I know that, you know, I'll probably, my agent's not going to love that. <laughs> but it's a thousand bucks, Grant, of why it, it's attractive to people to believe in en the endless and endless possibilities. I get that. I think an element of that is very important. But I don't think you can OD on that. Delusion is a drug. You kind of need a little bit of it. But you can overdose on it. You know comics that have OD'd on delusion. You can see it. They're kind of, they kind of look like they have wet brain. They're like, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, man. They, you can feel it. You go, oh, you stuck the needle deep in. You mainlined 
delusion. And now you're in your mid thirties and you look haggard and things are not good. And you're bombing in a bar for 11 people. And, and you're talking to me about Netflix. And I'm like, Netflix? Net? What? Come again? But you, you all know those people that have just OD'd. You got, so you got to just, every now and then, a little delusion's good. And I don't think Christina's OD'd on delusion. But I, I, she's, she's realistic. She's, she's a good person. You know, and I like her. We can all do it. We can all OD. Sometimes you got to rein it in. You got to rein your friends in sometimes. You start thinking you're going to be able to do all these things and you're like, let me just focus on one fucking thing. Don't focus on the house that you're going to buy when you do the thing. Focus on the thing and then don't worry about the fucking house. It's all backwards. You got it backwards. I just want a house on a cliff. (laughs) You know what? Everyone does. Everyone does. Dumb, dumb. Everybody that has ever lived wants that. You are not unique in that. I just want a beautiful seaside mansion. That's all I want. Yeah, of course you do. We all do. What can you do that other people can't? What is the thing that separates you from all the other people that want that? Is it the work ethic? Is it? The ingenuity, is it the tenacity? What is it? But, you know, my dreams now, I just want to own a house. I don't even care where it is or what it looks like. I just want a home. That's all I want. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I've been beaten down so much that my dreams are like what people, my my dreams are people's like safety. People are like, well, if everything goes to shit, we can live like this. That's my dream. That's my like best case situation. I hear people's conversations are like, well, if we're fucked, we can always buy a half a million dollar house and just. I'm like, yeah, that's what I think. I mean. So you just can't mainline you just can't mainline the delusion, folks. You need a little bit of it. And then you'll meet people with no delusion, and that's a problem too, because they don't believe in anything. They don't believe that they get it. And you meet these people that are so married to their own unfortunate circumstances. I went out the other day with some kid, and it was just it was just he was around, and I was went to this costume shop with him. Nice kid, wasn't a date, wasn't any of that. Younger guy. I don't want to say kid. I don't mean like Epstein kid. Young, early 20s, going out, platonic friend thing. We go to the steakhouse, Musso and Frank in downtown LA, only because it's by the costume shop. I was like, I want to go in there. I'm trying, I'm trying to eat like better. Maybe I'll just have a steak and whatever. And the kid wouldn't shut up about how nice it was. First of all, it's not that nice. It's very old and, and it always goes too far where you're like, hey, I'm not less healthy. Yes, you are. You can you feel less healthy. It, it it's something that you can feel. You don't have to go to a doctor to find out. And look, you see where it ends. It's like drugs. It ends at my six hundred pound life. That's the end. Those people are less healthy. They can't move. They sit on pillows, and the people just feed them. And somehow they have boyfriends and husbands, and they're getting laid. <laughs> These alt right people talking about <laughs> these school shooters are kind of decent looking. A lot of these shooters, I'm like, I'd suck off anybody who's done a mass shooting. Really, in the last in the last decade, I would absolutely get face fucked by anyone who's done a mass shooting in the last ten years. What's the problem? I mean, God, how many of these mass shooters do I have to feel guilty about jerking off? I have the idea of that I save a mass shooting, that I save, like, there's just one of these creepy guys about to shoot something up, and then I meet him, and I just suck him so good that he just kills me. And then himself. And that's my dream. And no one will know that I that 20 people in a Walmart are now safe. 
Just put a star on the wall like the CIA memorial. You'll never know my name. Just a star on the wall. I just, you know, took some dick to the throat in Hoover, Alabama, so that one guy won't go out there now and shoot up. And he just goes, fuck, what a great blowjob, but now I should just kill this guy and myself. And I'm like, I don't have to, I don't have to do the improv lab next week. He goes, nope. And I go, oh, okay. And that's something that I've always dreamed of. And um, I'm going to refresh my email. Let's see if the guy from the booker from your mom's house has not gotten back to me. I got to think that's a bad sign. Now, I don't know. Now, Ben, you're a producer of a podcast. And you, 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 I am. Irish women will use them as ashtrays. It's the best you can hope for. Best you can hope for is sell some seashells online. A fat Irish broad will use it as an ashtray. That's the most you're going to get out of this life. Some people are going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll tell you. You ain't, you ain't getting much more than that. Okay, Piggy? Oink. Go to, go to the site. Get the plan. Don't fuck around here. If you don't buy these plans, you're going to have to start watching Stephen Colbert. You want to do that? You want to watch Stephen Colbert talk about uh, Trump being orange for an hour? You need to watch Pepsi? Drink Coke. And here's Stephen Colbert. And go, go do that. Go do that. Go live in that nightmare. Go watch Jimmy Fallon you know, play pool with Kermit. Go watch Jimmy Fallon go to fucking uh, go to Applebee's with Miss Piggy and Cardi B or whatever the hell they're doing. Go watch that. You want that? You want that as your entertainment? Maybe you deserve that. Maybe you deserve that. Like some fat hog from Ohio. Okay, is that what you want? Some big fat slob from Galveston, Texas, who's full of crawfish mac and cheese. You want that? The life you want? No, you don't. Go buy the Wix plan. Goodbye. Off your order. I wanted to talk about my favorite story um, of the week. A guy who is um, one of his daughters or sons, I forget, was in Parkland. Oh, yes. <clears throat> and he uh, believed or came to be of the belief that the Parkland shooting was a hoax. Mm. And the uh, quote here from the New York Post is that Park Clan survivor says dad has turned to QAnon conspiracies and thinks massacre was a hoax. If this country had any balls, <laughs> if the entertainment industry had any balls, is that not a reality show that you're watching? Is that not a reality show that you do not miss every single time it's on, you would leave family engagements. You might leave uh, your wife giving birth to see the end of an episode of that show where a survivor of the Parkland shooting and her father argued about whether it happened or not. Am I the only one that wants to see this in real time? Can we set up a debate? Because I don't know that I'm going to side with the girl. She might be a cunt. Mm. And in fact, the fact that the father believes this to me means that the child is like a bitch. You've got to really suck for your dad to choose Alex Jones over you. Truly. But she may. But I want to see it. I want to see more about it. A teen who claims to be a survivor of the high school shooting in Parkland, Florida, is being traumatized all over again by his father. Oh, him. A QAnon believer says the massacre was just a hoax. The student who recently graduated said his dad's conspiracy theories, which surfaced after he became a devotee of QAnon, have now caused a rift in the family, he told The Post on Monday. He was always an avid Trump supporter, and after the pandemic, into Q, the man who asked to remain anonymous, wrote in an email. So he was already predisposed to falling into the fake news crowd and trusting people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. So it's what, that's what started the whole thing. Um... People have told me that it may be a coping mechanism to be able to deal with what happened, but I don't know, the man added. I just love the idea of a dinner table, like a father at dinner, and the, you know, the, the kid's like, do you have any idea 
what I've been through. And your father's like, you're still going, you're still going with that story. You're still doing that. You're going to look me in the face and tell me that there was a shooting at your school. You're going to tell me that after everything I know, after everything that you know, I know who's paying you. Whose payroll are you on? I know it's not the majority, but anyone accusing me of using my trauma. So this is the person that is. Uh, this is their Reddit thread that went viral. This is their viral on r slash QAnon casualties. I know it's not the majority, but anyone accusing me of using my own trauma to spin a story. Fuck you. This was literally just a spur of the moment rant. I thought it would reach at most a couple of hundred upvotes. I never planned this blowing up. I never contacted the media. What the fuck would I get out of this? This is really fucking important to me because however terrible you imagine the shooting being double that. Way too much of my high school experience was dealing with this shit. So believe I'd never make light of it because you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You watch his interrogation footage and he seems just like a brain dead child like moron who's too fucking stupid to know what's going on. He is, but he's also a literal fucking demon. I've never seen determination like that in my entire life. And there's a lot of people who don't know. So fuck you. And this is why that kid should have done sports. <laughs> He's talking about who, Nicholas Cruz? Yeah, about Cruz, yeah. Go through this sub and you might realize what QAnon is capable of doing to their own family. They're delusional fucking people trapped in a cult. Fact. There are literally anti-vax nurses. Kind of funny. <laughs> 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 Folks, I don't know what you want me to do. If it's funny, I have to laugh at it. You know, I mean, it's funny. It's kind of funny. Uh, you know, there's a variance of opinions on the vaccine. Why should nurses hold them? Mm. It is just kind of funny mm. if... A nurse is like whispering in someone's ear like, don't get it. <laughs> don't get it. It's funny to me. It's funny if you don't think there's, if you if you are of the belief that we're going to get out of this mm -hmm. and there's like brighter days ahead, this is all very tough for you to take. But if you've uh, settled into um, the idea that uh, this is maybe the best it'll be, hilarious. He's done extensive research on body language. He claims he can tell the shooter is a radical commie actor who was paid to sacrifice his life in order to remove our guns. He's questioning why they released the interrogation footage, if not to further deceive the, quote, sheep, believing everything they see. He also says the trial will be rigged, and the reason they're talking about the death penalty is to prevent him from ever talking just in case. What's really fucked up is that he knows I never want to hear about him or see his face ever again. This person feels, I'm going to get a cigarette. How do you think this person feels about what happened today? Yes, Ben, I believe that all to be the case, but. They were definitely checking your Instagram and they saw the post for sure. And they thought, oh, fuck this guy. Absolutely. Fuck this guy. You get the matches. Yeah. Yes, Ben, I believe that all to be the case. But as somebody who is it, do you do you say. How do you view, do you laugh about it? Do you say Tim is a funny guy? He's a funny guy and he's a wacky guy. And do you maybe bring me in to berate me and have Drew berate me for being a liar? Is that not nice? I bet that would be hilarious, but I bet Dr. Drew is probably a guy that his time is very valuable. So who knows who did you see who they pulled in, by the way? Did they pull in somebody? Or? I didn't look. I don't think they're recording live because Jessa Reed just did one and hers is going to come out later on. I bet Drew was pissed. I bet he was mad because he's sitting there. He drove all the way up to what? Reseda? It sent in traffic to fucking. I can't control where people go, Ben. <laughs> OK, I can't control where people go. I told you I had a fucking emergency. My mother. Got out of her institution <laughs> and wound up in Manhattan Beach. <laughs> now, I was shocked when the people at my mother's mental institution called me and go, your mother is on the run again. And I said, how far did she get? Out back? They said, no, she's been sighted in Manhattan Beach by the 10th Street Beach, which is beautiful. <laughs> you should go and try to find her in the water. And then when I got to the 10th Street Beach, they said, I think she's at Captain Tripp's fish market 
Why don't you go there? And if she's not there, at least try the blackened salmon and the lobster roll and the macaroni salad, which were phenomenal. And then I got to Captain Trips and they go, she might be at the Trump golf course. So this bitch, I'm trying to get her with a big net. She's a big woman. Now, so it's an emergency. God, I am so fucking banned. <laughs> I am so banned. They are never having me back. No they are never having no me way. back. I am done. I am so <laughs> done. But that's what it is, man. That's where you got to get good at lying. Mm. You got to get good at it. Like when you go to a restaurant and it's the nicest restaurant you've ever been to, go, oh, yeah, this reminds me of a place I went to last week because I, 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 I hang. I can hang. You're the best fucking liar, dude. You've, you're very talented. That's obvious. Thank you. But, but today I fucked up. Your biggest talent is lying. I've seen you get out of so many fucking situations, dude. So many. Talk about that one in Long Island. Remember that? We With, went to go see that mob house. Well, can I say the name of that guy? I guess I can. Yeah, right? who cares? Vinny Ocean, right? Yeah, he was this guy that lived in my town that The Sopranos is based on. He ran a family in New Jersey, you know? So Tim's taking He'll me- be getting a Netflix half hour before me, <laughs> by the way. Thanks a lot for no offer. My 50 minutes was good. <laughs> Fucking no offer. Thanks a lot, everybody over there. So we pull up to Vinny Ocean's house, which is- I hope Ozark this year is kind of believable. <laughs> I hope it's- within the realm of believability because that shows about as believable as me having an emergency today. So, so we're, we're driving across Long Island and I'm, I never worry about being in the car with you, even though your license is, is I've driven on acid many times. I know what I'm doing. I just know you have a lie prepared. If you get pulled up, I haven't had a license in five years. And I don't plan on getting one. I, the state and me have never seen eye to eye. Mm -hmm. I, it's not for me. Like, I parked the other day in West Hollywood. My friend goes, you can't park here. I go, D it's not for me. These rules are not for me. I don't subscribe to this. I don't care. I don't care. I'll leave. I'll move. I'll move out of the state. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, no. This is alternate side. No, today's not the day. I go, oh, today is the day. Today is absolutely the day we park here because my show is right there. Mm -hmm. Today's the day. <laughs> and we parked, and it's fine. There was no ticket. No. I get bagged very rarely. Why? I hate to say it. <laughs> it's an unfair world. I look like a dad. I'll just start telling the cop. Be, My kids are all dead. <laughs> so, so go into that. I'm sorry. So we're driving and, and we, we pull into, which you always told me was down the street from your childhood house, but Tony Soprano's house is down the street. Legit. Yeah. We, Vinny Ocean. And you, we pulled up, looks legit just like, 100%. David Chase had and the Sopranos. As soon as we pull in, we pull you pull in way too far because you were bad at using the shifting from drive to reverse. Very Correct. bad at it. We go a little too far and I pull my camera out and yeah. I, I start taking a picture. Yeah. And as soon as I take a picture, some dude in a wife beater and shorts yeah. busts out the front. Yeah. What the fuck y'all doing? What are y'all doing? No, you're what doing black. Fuck? He's Italian. Oh, wait. Do Guido. Oh, how do you? You're, do, you're doing. You're doing black. You do. What y'all doing? It's like, yo, what are you doing? There that you was go. that. That was that. You're doing black. So he comes up to to my side of the window, I yeah. believe, and I start looking at my phone, trying to think. I'm like, ah, oh, I should just pretend I'm on a Google Maps. Yeah, you're no help in this situation. No, you go. <laughs> I right. should have put my phone. You up. go. You I had, know. I had you, 15 you. You make it worse. <laughs> you like make it. You look guilty. You seem guilty. <laughs> And I just looked at him and I like start yelling at him. Like, I don't know where I'm going. I'm like, where am I going? We got to get, we got to get out. We have to get off the island. I'm like, how do we get off the island? And now he's confused. He's like, You're well, clearly from Long Island, by the I'm way. I'm clearly from Long Island. <laughs> I'm clearly, I'm clearly from New York. How do I get out? I've never been here before. I'm from Alabama. The guy, so, but, but he was just thrown. Completely. It's completely thrown. Completely. He's completely thrown. He was so confused. I think he knew you were lying, but he was just like, it, you, you got to go that way to get out. And you're like, oh, okay. And then it took you like two minutes to like get it into reverse. Yeah. And to get out of there. But clearly a member of the family. I yeah, think. probably. You know, I, I've tried to lie with care. You know? And today was a day when sometimes you're caught. Sometimes when I when I saw that email, I said I fucked up. I fucked up today. I should have remembered. Man, I for, sometimes I'll forget. Do you ever just totally forget? 
I totally forgot. The original date was next week. They moved it to Friday. I totally forgot. As soon as Christine said, let's go to the beach, I was like, oh, that's fun. We'll go do that. And I totally didn't think Mm -hmm. about it. And I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that I didn't. But the Instagram story was already up. I was already fucked. I was kind of already fucked. You you called me and you were just laughing. You just couldn't. When the Instagram story's up, because it's an interesting thing. Now that the story's up, what do you do? You got to be really good. You almost go, do I do, when, do I do, do I go full honest and go, I just totally forgot. I'm so sorry and profusely apologize. I could have done that. That might have been the better move here to profusely apologize and say, I forgot. Although I think that's as bad. I think that's as bad. You think as, so? That seems like the best option here. Because you're a faggot. Nobody respects. First of all, I wouldn't have had this story. I wouldn't have had a great laugh. I don't really give a shit either way. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I go on to get psychoanalyzed by fucking Dr. Drew for an hour. Who gives a fuck. I mean, it would be nice. It'd be fun. I do want to do Tom and Christina's show. I am upset. You know, but here's the thing. Yes, you're right. In this situation, honesty was probably the best policy. But... You know, it's like somebody, there was that quote, maybe it's really not. So they're like, it doesn't work. It's not my fault. It's not their fault. Just frame a rep, you know, it just is what it is. But it's like you travel, you see different shit. I stayed in a courtyard Marriott. Courtyard Marriott is now just buying shitty hotels and putting the Marriott name on them. And you know, hotels are shitty when they have the popcorn ceilings and when the, the motel walls are like that, that sand paint. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To hide the the structural problems with the wall, like to hide how fucked up the wall is. They have that sand paint, you know? And it's like it, you, you put your fingers over it and you feel. And when you're laying there, you're laying in the bed and the bed's never great. You're looking up at the ceiling and the popcorn ceiling and you're wondering how many hookers have laid in that exact spot hoping that a John didn't flip the fuck out and choke them to death, you know, in Hoover, Alabama. How many fucking Johns have fucked some some dude, some fucking guy from their church group while their wife thinks they're out taking a jog and some guys sucking them off in a courtyard Marriott? How many people's lives... Just the absolute horror of people's lives. How many, and by the way, worse, much worse than those two images is me after a gig at the Stardome asking why if it's called room service, do I have to go to the lobby and get it? That's the saddest image of them all. Me going, let me ask you a question. She goes, well, we don't have anyone to run it up. I go, well, you have you. Don't you have you? I got to be here for people to check in. Honey, honey, honey. No one's checking in. Let's lock the doors and let's call it a night. Everybody that's here, everyone that needs to be here is here now. Um, but that's the road, man. And. And it's, 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 I, I, I thank everybody who came out in Huntsville, Alabama. I don't think, I think four people came out in Hoover, Alabama, four, four to seven fans of mine that looked terrified. You know, folks, I thought a lot today about, I was on the beach. I was in uh, Manhattan Beach. I was swimming in the Pacific Ocean and it was beautiful. And I was staring out. I was looking at the hills. They're not quite mountains, but they're maybe they're mountainous. And I was just kind of floating on my back. And I was looking up at the sky. And it's just beautiful. The Pacific Ocean is beautiful. And I was looking around me at all this natural beauty. And I I had a thought. I said to myself, I said, I wish... I was in a dark room online scrolling. 
That's what I realized. I said, who the fuck wants to waste their goddamn time in the natural world? The natural world is a waste of time. Everything that is not the internet is fake. The virtual world is now the real world. It's actually the other way around. It's inverse. It's the upside down and stranger things has become the right side up. Nothing valuable happens outside of a digital community. Nothing. I don't care about your baby. I don't care about your father that died. I don't care about the bird you saw that landed on your deck. I don't care. I don't care about your kid's first day of school unless I see it in a high resolution photo on your personal website that's branded. Then I care. Then I'm with it. But if I just happen upon it, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter to me. Okay? I want it organized. I want to see it on my time. I'm not talking about social media, that's amateur hour. I'm talking about a website that you've built yourself using Wix.com, a website that where if you don't want to design it, their artificial design intelligence, Wix ADI will design it for you. Answer a few simple fucking questions. Can't you do that? Can't you answer a few simple fucking questions? And they'll design the site for you. And if you want to have more input, they have 500 stunning templates that you can choose from to create a website that's visually appealing and functional. Okay. Because if I can't go to a place to find out what you're doing, I don't want to see you in real life. I don't want to see you across the table from me at a restaurant. I don't want to hear about, I want you to write a story about your mother's battle with cancer. And I want to read about it while I'm eating cereal at two o'clock in the morning. I don't want to hear you tell me about it while you have fucking fish breath. Do you understand? Human interaction is over. We don't need it. Soon sex dolls are coming and we'll have, we'll have some type of breeding banks for new people. We don't need this constant we just need people to fucking put some fucking time into having a brand and put it on your site oh you know my my you know what happened to my cousin no i don't record a video telling the story and embed it in your wix site and i'll watch it i don't want to see you in person i don't care but if i'm online i might go to your site i might buy something Post a link to something that I can buy. Maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I'll buy a mug from you. But not if I see you with one. I want want to do it on my time, my schedule. Wix.com. What are we we doing here? Slash what? Tim Dillon's going to hell. Oh, yeah. This is the big thing. You got to go to Tim Dillon's going to hell.com. Look at this site that was made using Wix. Tim Dillon's going to hell.com. Scroll to the bottom of the site. Click on the thing. It's very cheap. It's like 15 a month for a website. If you need a website, there's no cheaper than this that will look professional. I'm telling you. Some of you need a website. Some of you need a gun. But some of you need a website. So if you scroll to the bottom of Tim Dillon's going to hell.com, you click on the link. It'll give you $10 off any of their premium plans. 10% off. 10% off any of their premium plans. Okay? So that you can stop hiking, stop cut the shit out, get online. We're all online, folks. Stay online. Stay online. There is no salvation outside of this box. That's it. TV's dead. It's all over. Your family's over. Your friends hate you. Get online. Sell your shit. Sell your seashells online. See who will buy them. Irish women will use them as ashtrays. It's the best you can hope for. 
That's what you could hope for. Sell some seashells online. Some fat Irish broad will use it as an ashtray. That's the most you're going to get out of this life. Some people are going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll tell you. You ain't, you ain't getting much more than that. Okay, Piggy. Oink. Go to, go to the site. Get the plan. Don't fuck around here. If you don't buy these plans, you're going to have to start watching Stephen Colbert. You want to do that? You want to watch Stephen Colbert talk about uh, Trump being orange for an hour? You can watch Pepsi? Drink Coke. And here's Stephen Colbert. Go, go do that. Go do that. Go live in that nightmare. Go watch Jimmy Fallon you know, play pool with Kermit. Go watch Jimmy Fallon go to fucking... Uh, Go to Applebee's with Miss Piggy and Cardi B or whatever the hell they're doing. Go watch that. You want that? You want that as your entertainment? Maybe you deserve that. Maybe you deserve that. Like some fat hog from Ohio. Okay, is that what you want? Some big fat slob from Galveston, Texas, who's full of crawfish mac and cheese. You want that? The life you want? No, you don't. Go buy the Wix plan. Goodbye. I mean, these are.